Today I'm going to discuss the old-fashioned way of creating the first flange. Here we have some completed exterior body panels. These surfaces now need to have a flange that bends in at the cut line. Now, what I've done to this point is I've created some curves, as you can see, out here in space. This is the shape from the top, this is the shape from the back, and I've just simply projected these curves. These curves are the cut line of my said flange. So let me go ahead and just hide these curves, I no longer need to visualize these. Now there is a tool that will automatically create flanges for you based off of a curve on the surface and a vector direction and such and it works pretty good. There are certain limitations to it that I, I personally feel there are certain um, limitations to it. Well, I should say limitations or just precautionary measures that you have to take with the tool that automatically puts in the first flange. Now, the first flange includes a bend and then a, a linear tangent flange that comes off and the reason why you do this is if this is a piece of sheet metal, which in this case it is, you have to have a frame that goes in on the back side to support it. Well, when you put that frame in, you need that flange to basically be hemmed over and around completely to encapsulate that frame. So, that first flange is part of the first initial stamping on the vehicle. So when the geniuses who make these tools create the, the actual part, they have to not only form this shape, but they also have to create that first flange on that first stamping. One big giant stamping, a couple of swipes, boom, you got your flanges in. So I'm going to run through the old-fashioned method using law extension. Now with this, we're going to have to be careful to make sure we select the proper vectors. In this case, we have a vector coming down in the Z and we have a vector coming across in the X. So these vectors have to be put in independently when creating this flange. So these flanges are all going to be bent based off of the X direction or a tooling direction that an engineer may specify. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to use a Z and X for this re as a reference. So I'll go into law extension. I want to make sure the type is set to vector and my base profile curves. It's going to be this and this. I'm not going to specify tangent curves because I don't want this whole chain to be selected. Once I have that picked, it's going to ask me for my vector. My vector is the Z direction. Off of the Z direction, I want to make sure it goes gets, gets long enough. 40 mils is more than long enough. Basically, you're only going to need to go the, the material thickness times three. The material thickness is basically from the top hemmed all the way down and around and as it comes down and around remember there's a piece of sheet metal that's going to insert so that piece of sheet metal is basically typically has the same thickness as the exterior body panel and um, so you just want to make sure that you have this flange that's going to be long enough to be formed going around that edge. So in this case I'll just simply go and say this is going to be typically three mils is way more than enough but so we can visualize it I'm going to leave it big. So we'll go 15 and then I need an angle. What's my angle for that first flange coming out of that tool? You'll notice I have five in there for angle and that's way more than enough. That's plenty. There's going to be some spring back on this as the as the tool comes apart and it'll release. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it at five again to make it obvious that this is um, the, the the angle, so you can visualize exactly what I'm doing, and simply select apply. So there is a flange surface. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this curve using this X direction and what I want to make sure is is that I'm going in the correct direction so for this I'm gonna to have to switch this I'm just gonna to have to say minus 5 there we go and apply do the same thing with this curve like 
like that. And we'll say five, apply. And do the same thing with this one. We'll say minus five. And OK. Now that I have my initial flange surfaces in, I'm going to go ahead and put in blends here. A lot of times people will project a curve and then run the actual log extension around that curve. I don't like to do that. The reason being is, is as you go around that curve, there's a potential that the surfaces will bunch up with the log extension. So in this case, it's much easier just to simply put in a face blend to get the shape that you want on this curve, or we'll start over in this corner. I got a little bit of work to do up here I want to show you. I think you'll be very interested in seeing. So I'm going to take this and this one, reverse this. And in this case, I'll just leave it at tangent symmetry. And I can increase my center radius, or I can say a row value. Maybe I want a row value of exactly 0.7. And I want to trim an input, trim all, all the inputs. OK? So let me go ahead and hide these curves now. So that's my uh, blend between those two. So now the next thing I want to do is let me go ahead and hide this is I need to create a surface that goes from this over to here. So what I like to do is I like to basically clean these surfaces up. So I'm going to go ahead and use my extend sheet. I'm going to extend this edge out. You'll see why here in a minute. Select OK. Now that I have my extend sheet in there, I'm going to go ahead and draw on a curve. And I want this curve to run somewhere in this area. Okay, so what I'm going to eventually do is I'm going to create a blend that runs through here or through curve or some sort of a mesh that runs from this edge down to this curve on this surface. So for that, I'm going to go into curve, say curve on surface on this face and specify my points. I want to make sure on surface is selected. So I'm going to go from this point over to this point. Let's see here. Oh, I have closed curve turned on. There we go. Turn that puppy off. And then now I can basically sweeten this up, put this into a position that I want. Move that up there. Move that over there. Select OK. Now that my curve is in place, actually, let me extend this out. It's the engineer in me. Whoops. It wants to snap to the end. Let me go ahead and turn off the snap. There we go. And OK. With that, I'm going to go back into surface. The type of surface, I can just create a through curve for this. I want to go from this edge over to this curve and put in my, make sure I have my continuity set up. That's my face to my face. As you can see, I picked incorrectly, and I know that because my arrows are pointing in the opposite direction, so I get a little twist. So I'll just double click on that to get that to go to the direction that I want. Now, you'll see that I get this nasty little kink in here because it's going around this corner. And that's fine for now. I'm going to select OK. And what I can do now is I can start modifying this curve, bring this down a little bit. And I can tweak this and play around with it. If I do not get the results that I want, then I can go ahead and add in another curve. So go ahead, let me go ahead and delete this. Or actually, you know what? I don't like deleting things. Eh, yeah, screw it, I'll just delete it and make it again. I'll come in here, I'll go back into curve, curve on surface, on this surface. We'll go from point to point. And for this one, this is going to run up pretty close over to here. This is going to run a little bit further back. And then now I'll go ahead and put on my through curves. 
This time I know the arrows are pointing in the same direction, so this should go smooth. We'll go from this face over to this face. And again, I, you know, one of the things I can do is I can just simply use a tangent continuity as well. And I have a much smoother flow, much smoother transition. And it's corners like this that the, the geniuses that put these tools together will figure out themselves. What ends up happening in these corners is the hem will get trimmed a little short in order to make it fit. So I'll just simply select OK. That looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and do my trim sheet. I want to trim this to here. Oops, I want to pick my curve, there we go. And you'll see I'm not able to trim this. And the reason why I'm not able to trim this is because this curve doesn't run all the way to the top edge. And that's fine, I can come in here and I can move this and get this to go to my top edge. Did I get it? No, no. All right, let's give it a shot. Trip sheet. And apply. I want to trim this sheet and to that one. And OK. So there is my flange running across that top edge. Now that I have that in, I'm going to go ahead and put my other shape fillet in down here. I'm sorry, face blend. Go over this one to here. Put in whatever parameters it is you need. For this, I'll just leave it as such. And this is basically my final surface that's going to be used for my first flange. And you'd do the same thing for this bottom edge. You'd create another surface blend it in and that there's your first flange. So how do we actually make the first flange? Well, I'll go ahead and hide that. I'm go ahead and hide that. Before I actually make the first flange, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an offset. I'm going to offset this surface. And I'm going to go in just so we can see it. Again, this is going to be big, but I'm, I want to make it big for the purposes of the demo. I'm going to go in five mils, select OK. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another offset of this surface. I'm going to reverse that. And I'll just simply go uh, three mils. Maybe I want a, a three mil. I'll leave it at five. There we go. No, let me go three. I don't want to fight this corner. There we go. Now that I have all that in place, I'm going to go ahead and create my face blend. Again, this face blend is going to go from this top surface to this outside surface. Reverse that. And the radius is, again, this is going to be small and this is just simply can be a circular because it's a very small, it's less than three millimeters. And my radius I'll just put in uh, 1.5. We go. I'm going to select OK. And there is my first flange on my surface. How do we make this a hem? OK. That's what this surface is for and this surface is for. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So we can see it a little bit better. Make it three. I think three should fit on this. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this sheet to this surface. You'll see here it doesn't go all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply do an extend. This is a great place to do an extend. I'm going to extend this edge. And I'll do the same thing on the other side just to make sure it goes through. And I know it already does, but I'm funny that way. I'll do a trim sheet. I'll select the sheet I want to trim to this and select OK. Let me go ahead and hide this. Look at it from the inside. So this is going to be the, the hem that wraps in and around. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in my face blend. I want this to this. I'm going to reverse that. We'll go up to three and select OK. So that is one way 
that you can go in and create your first flange. So you can see this is called a hem. This is hemmed in and around. Again, these blends or these fillets that I have in here are very, very large. Um, typically, they're going to be a little bit smaller than that, probably like one and a half or so. Another way you can do these is I put on a fillet and I put on another fillet. Sometimes they require a flat in between. If there's no flat required, if this needs to be a, a, just a complete round shape, instead of putting in multiple, let's do this, let me pick my, go to face blend and face blend and delete these. What I can use is once again, I can use a face blend but instead of simply using two defining face chains and doing it twice, I can go to three defining face chains. And this is one of those scenarios where, again, I may need to have a flat. If I need a flat, this is obviously not going to work. But if you do not need a flat, then you can do, do it in this fashion. And reverse this. Oh, unable to create blend. I think it may be a little big yeah let me let me shrink this offset on this here oops go there let me go to uh there we go now this should work change this to three third defining face chain. Reverse that. There we go. Trim everything up. Hide this puppy. And there you can see this is when I would have a hem that wraps all the way around without a flat spot. And again, that flat spot may be necessary depending upon how uh, the structure looks underneath. So this is typically what your 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 hem is going to look like and part of a job of a person that does class A surfacing in some cases are, is to make that first flange at first hem. Now I said earlier that there is a tool here called silhouette flange which we'll talk about in another lecture that will allow you to basically put on the first flange as well automatically um, and again it's very powerful great tool. Um, in certain instances, like coming around a corner like this, I'm, I may not use it. I may build my part the way that I built my part. This is tr closer true to form when it comes to what the tooling guy is going to build. Um, and sometimes that silhouette flange may not give you the type of control that you want, although it gives you a ton of control. But sometimes it's easier to build each individual segment based off of the vector direction that you want and then come in and put in this hem all the way around. What you may need to do in certain areas, like in this area, you may need to actually come in and remove the material from this part of the hem. You'll see oftentimes if you open up your door on your car and you look in the upper corners where you come into these tight corners, they actually remove this material to get the, um, the hem to form correctly. So this material would come in remove it, they would dip in and come back up and around. So you'll see lots of different things that they have to do to get the hem to work, but the, this is the basics of putting in your first flange, putting in a full hem.